Today in the U.S., reported by the Fed, household debt soars at the fastest pace in 15 years as credit card use surges. We're going to leave a link down below for you guys to read this article. Um, we are, my name is Alex, and that's Kirby over there with the Passive Money Plan. We're going to jump right into a couple of ways that you guys can get out of debt if you are in this situation. Um, Kirby, you have a, a lot of experience with getting out of a lot of debt. So can you jump into some of these steps? Yeah, and then uh, it's really five five easy steps. Five, and I'm not gonna say quick, depending on your your debt situation, uh, how long it will take, the timeline it will take. But it's five simple steps, and then if you stay tuned to the end of the video, you'll see the sixth step on how we use or how I use uh being into debt to start buying assets and then you know accumulate a nice size portfolio. And I flipped the script from being uh, super broke, or as, as Andrew Tate call it, brokies, to somebody uh, having, uh, like I said, pretty sizable network and have cash flow coming from different avenues. But with all that being said, please hit that subscribe and like button before we jump into this. And we're going to jump into it real hot and heavy. So please hit that like and subscribe button to support the channel. Uh, something free for you to do is to hit that subscribe button and like button while we spend our time producing this content for you. All right, Alex, number one, and then you can tell me if you disagree and we can go back and forth on this, but my first step, and this is a step I, I use to get out of a massive amount of debt, um, is just stop and inventory your life. You know, some people call it a budget, but just stop. Whatever, whatever situation you're in, no matter how much debt you're in, just stop. Well, everything you're doing, just stop and do an inventory of your life. And then, uh, you know, you gotta do that B word, you know, budget. But if you just stop and inventory your life and then just find out what's really, what's a want in your life and what's a necessity in your life. And honestly assess for yourself. If you really wanna get out of debt, then you really wanna honestly assess what's a real want and then what is a real need in your life. So what do you say about that? Yeah, I would agree. Um, I fortunately, uh, for those that are newer watching, um, if you haven't seen our earlier videos, uh, I fortunately didn't uh, really have any debt. I'm 24. I, I mean, I, I didn't go to college or anything like that. I didn't buy any new cars. So, but I did do that uh, because I was trying to be very conscious of my budget and, um, I know Kirby loves to go out to eat, but that was one thing I was doing a lot was uh, going out to eat. And uh, I was thinking uh, probably this is probably when I was about 19 that I was spending. Um, probably I did the math. It was probably like about five, six thousand dollars a year or for that year, at least. And just like going out to eat. And it was just because it wasn't like I was going out to lavish restaurants or nothing. It was just like. I wasn't making my own food for work and I was just buying food out and I realized it added up a lot. So my, my goal with that was to cut that expense out and just start, you know, cooking more at home. And that was just one thing that I did. Like if you're, once you become conscious of where your money is going, um, you can really start to direct where your money goes. Cause if you don't do a budget, your money basically is, you're not going to have any control and uh, your, your emotions are just going to lead you down to, you know, bad financial path. So you have to get control of how much you're actually bringing in, not the gross amount that you're making per year. If you make, you know, $45,000 a year, deduct what you would pay in taxes from that amount, see what's coming in per month and then what's going out per month. And that was one of the first things I did was start cutting back on, you know, going out to eat. Um, and then, you know, learning how to make a uh, coffee at home. Uh, you know, I thought for for whatever reason, I thought iced coffee was only sold out, you know, out out in the world. I didn't know you could make iced coffee at home. <laughs> you know, it's just like I had this idea that maybe it tastes better, like worse if you make it at home. But it's the same thing if you just know what you're doing. So there, there's things that you can, a lot of things uh, people could do to really cut back on their budget. Um or on what on their expenses within their budget. Yeah, and then I know people are scared of the B word budget, but the first the first time you do a budget, and you can do it on monthly or biweekly, however you choose. But the first time you do a budget, it's going to take a little longer. But then once you start getting into the 
the uh the cycle of it and you know income expenses income expenses left over and then it's you know five ten minute tasks people spend more than five or ten minutes uh a day on their cell phone looking at crazy tiktok videos and all that other stuff so you can take five or ten minutes out of your day to change your current financial situation uh number two is live on less than you make if you do the budget now you just know you have to live on less than you make and then so you know no matter what the number is it's not about how much money you make it's what you do with the money you make so you live on less than you make so if you're making ten dollars an hour uh maybe thirty thousand dollars a year you have to live on less than that i mean of course thirty thousand dollars a year after taxes is probably like twenty three thousand so you have to live on net in twenty three thousand you have to live on less than that and right you have to find a way it's you have two options. You're going to either stay in the situation you're in where you're stressed out over debt or you're going to find a way to live on less. And preferably, you want to find out how to live on less before the world makes you live on less, i.e. make the world making you recession comes and jobs getting cut and things like that. And now you're like, oh, I have to because I don't have the money. you rather do it when you can afford to do it. It's way easier to do it when you can afford to do it than when life or the world forces you to do it. And then when life forces you to do it, then you're scrambling the whole time. So if you're comfortable living on less than you make now, if a hardship come, you're already used to that environment, then you'll be good to go. Alex, what you got? Yeah, I would agree. Um, you just gotta do it. Um, and I, I don't think a lot of people like to just make that change in their life. Um, I, you know, I, I never thought it would be so hard. It's like when people come to me like at work or whatever and like ask for like tips and I just tell them like it's basic stuff like, you know, just cut back. Don't you know, some people go overboard with like the holidays, like the holidays. There is I never realized there's such a cycle to people going broke with holidays and they're just like strategically put throughout the whole year to just keep you broke like. And people just stay in this loop. You get whacked in the head by Christmas. And like, I'm probably gonna make so many people mad, but like, like if people want to spend on the holidays, like, can you just spend less? Like, I mean, like people will spend like six grand on their kids for like Christmas when they make 40 grand a year. And then, then you have Valentine's day coming right around the corner. And then there's mother's day, there's father's day, there's uh, Easter, there's, thanksgiving fourth of july like uh new year's and then like new year's right after uh christmas so you have to buy all the fireworks or whatever like and people literally just get stuck in this loop like i think if people just cut out holiday expenses it'd save a lot of money <laughs> I mean, like i said if people still want to celebrate holidays just like man like uh like i've told you about this like my wife's family um what they do with Christmas is like they just have a lot of family over and they just make a lot of food. Like you rarely see any gift exchange. Like it's just a bunch of food and just family time. And I I don't see how much, you know, I don't see a lot of money being spent on that day with by them. You know what I mean? But, uh, you know, I think the American culture is very much like you have to spend money for it to be considered you know a holiday and then of course your birthday is squeezed in there and if people would control that you know is it really necessary is it needed to like, i can't stress that word enough is it actually needed for you to spend thousands of dollars uh on a holiday for for it to be considered a holiday to you and your family it's it's insane um and, you know, getting over that point. And then also, you know, just other leisure activities that people are just not willing to give up. They want to go to the theme parks. They, you know, they want to have that annual pass or they want to have the iPhone forever plan. Uh, they want to go out to eat every weekend or every day. Um, I mean, if you can afford it, it's one thing. But if you can't and your budget is showing that you can't. And if you go to someone for financial advice, you obviously can't afford these things but you go for advice but then when you're told to you know cut back on your lifestyle because you can't afford it then you know you get offended and 
now you 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 just aren't willing to to make those changes you have to be willing to make those changes if you want to correct yourself that's that's all it is yeah i agree I agree and touche to all your points. Uh, number three, Death Snowball. Alex don't know nothing about this, so I'll run into this. One. Uh, so Death Snowball is it's a simple concept. Uh, simple concept. You what you do is so now you inventory your life. You understand that you have to live on less than you make. So you do a Death Snowball. On the Death Snowball is list all your debts from largest to smallest on a piece of paper. Largest to smallest monthly payments. The largest monthly payments to the lowest monthly payment. And then what you do, because now you know you have to live on less than you make, you're going to make the minimum payment for every one of those bills. All Well, all that debt, you're going to make the minimum payment. And then with the extra money that you're going to have because you're going to live on less than you make, you're going to tackle and then throw as much money as you can at the lowest at the lowest debt. And then you're going to keep doing that to the lowest debts paid off. So now you have that minimum payment plus what you're throwing at it to go to the next one. That's uh, the next lowest debt. And then you keep doing that plow away. Then you go to the next the uh, the next lowest debt, the next lowest debt. And then you just build the momentum. Of course, like Dave Ramsey always say, people say mathematically, that don't make much sense. You should go with the highest interest rate one. But this is not math. If we knew math, we wouldn't be in the debt situation we're in right now. What it is, is it's helping you build momentum so you can see progress. So you can see, all right, that credit card bill is gone. That store card is gone. Um, this other credit card is gone. Uh, this dental bill is gone. Stuff like that is starting to come off uh, your obligations. Then that's more, mo more money and more money that you will have to pay off the next debt and the next debt. And that's the higher. And as the higher it goes, and you get the debts cleared off. Now, once all those debts are cleared off, all that money is free to you to do what you need to do with it. Again, I didn't say what you want to do with it. I said what you need to do with it. Yeah, I let you got any. Yeah, yeah, any I, do. On that? I do, I do. Uh, I know I haven't, you know, been in that debt snowball situation but um it makes sense um you know like you said uh if people were mathematical then they wouldn't be in debt in that situation um you know so for those people that have a lot of debt uh you know consumer spending is very emotional so for them to see that they're making progress making those small credit card payoffs it's it shows them progress and that's an emotional effect to keep them on that path um and uh, yeah, that I mean, that's a great point. If like you said, if if they were mathematical, they wouldn't be in that situation. And that goes for investing too. Uh, Dave Ramsey talked about it. You have to be very financial lit, financially literate to uh, to actually know what you're doing when you're investing. If you or using leverage, if you if you aren't, then you're just going to ruin the whole thing. I agree. And then, so we did step, that's step three, debt snowball. Mm -hmm. Step four, but remember, you do a step two, three, and four at the same time. So now you, now you know you got to live on less than you make. And then now you're probably thinking, oh, if I did this debt snowball, then it's going to take me X amount of months, X amount of years to complete. But on top of that, so now you know you're living on less than you make with the, the first job you have. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to obtain a side hustle, a side job. I don't care if it's cutting grass. Uh, they don't have newspaper routes no more. But uh, maybe doing um, online tutoring, uh, you know, maybe selling stuff online. Maybe, I mean, it's a lot of things that you could do. Maybe uh, yard sale arbitrage. That's that's one of my favorites right there. Things like that. Finding side hustles that can get you, you know, more money. Maybe babysitting somebody's kids or something like that. But find a way to get more money on top of what you're already bringing in from your first job or just go get a second job. So that will give you more money to streamline paying off all that debt faster. And I'm not saying you need the, the second job, the side hustle, I say keep forever. But if you work in two and three jobs, you know, to speed up the debt snow, snowball, that's fine. You don't have to have those two and three jobs forever if you don't want them. But at least have it enough to get rid of all of that um, consumer debt and then you can move on from there. Got any input on step four, Alex? Yeah, no, I would agree. I love the yard sale arbitrage. Um, it works. I have experience with it. So, um, yeah, I would it, use any. And then the, the good thing about that, too, is if you do pick up, say, um, you know, some some people may not want to be working two, three jobs, uh, like uh, actual, you know, say corporate jobs or whatever. But um if you pick up a side hustle that's making money to help you pay off debt, then you can just continue to grow that side hustle and turn it into a business beyond, you know, once you've paid off your debt. So 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And then step five is just simply the la- the the pinnacle of what you're trying to do. You pay off all your consumer debt. When I'm saying list your debt, I'm meaning consumer debt, like credit card bills, store cards, car payments. All that stuff is consumer debt. All that stuff, everything you bought in those realms and those areas are depreciating assets is going down in value. So step five is just paying off the debt. And once you pay off the debt, all that money that you was paying monthly to all these different companies so you can have this debt or have these goods that you have in your uh, in your arsenal. And I and y'all notice I didn't go to Dave Ramsey route and say, oh, go sell everything you have. I mean, I believe in that, but I didn't go that route. Uh, and then once you've done paying off all the consumer debt, that's just step five, paying it off. And then now you have all that money in in your household to do what you need to do with it. And then the... The part that I said, and I promised this earlier, that give you step six on how to build wealth with the same method here is never go into consumer debt again. Mm-hmm. Again, I say consumer debt. Don't ever go into consumer debt again. Don't sit there and spend money on your credit cards and stuff like that or store cards or buying cars. If you look at the previous video that we did on, uh, I believe it was. It's a video coming out. So on reaction, one of those reaction days. Um, but you know, sitting here having cars 15 and 20 years. Don't go just because you have this extra money and you want a new car. Don't go out buying this electric car. And step six is you know, not using uh debt again to buy consumer goods, only use debt to um uh, buy appreciating assets like business, real estate, and stuff like that. And that's what they consider good and bad debt. You know, those realms are considered good debt. And if you do that, so now you took all the money and now you see, I haven't said do nothing extravagant. You don't have to go to a PhD course in Harvard or anything to learn is you paid off all your debt. Now you have money to do something that you need to do with it. And that's build wealth and build a cushion for your family. And then so now you just continue to build that cushion. And then if you, you want to start building wealth, then you start buying assets like businesses or real estate to uh, make make that happen. And that's when you want to use debt for assets like that instead of the depreciating assets that got you in the situation that you're currently in. And that's why you're watching this video. So Alex, do you got any input on that before we close out? Yeah, no. Um, you know, by the time you do pay off all your debt and you are starting to invest uh, in assets, um, be careful with that too. You know, uh, I think like we've talked about before, people need to be financially literate if they're going to use leverage, uh, if you can't figure that part out, then buy assets and businesses like Dave Ramsey says in cash, uh, you know, make sure you're paying cash for them, but that would be it. Yeah. Well, with all that being said, please again, like subscribe, comment in the comment section below, and we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. See you guys.